Hi everyone, my name is Darren Collins. I'm the president here at the College of the Atlantic and an alumnus, and I'm gonna give you a campus tour today. COA is located about five hours north of Boston on an island called Mount Desert Island. And the campus is 38 acres on Frenchman Bay, plus two farms and two research islands. This is the route we're gonna to take today. We're gonna to start at the Whale Skull and then work our way south toward the town of Bar Harbor and then loop toward the ocean and then come all the way back north and make a big circle. Before I start the tour, there are three things that I'd like you to keep in mind. And the first is that we're gonna focus on the 38 acre main campus, but the campus is much, much bigger than that. It's two 100 acre farms, Beach Hill Farm and Peggy Rockefeller Farm. It's also two amazing offshore islands, Great Duck Island and Mount Desert Rock. But then it's also really the entire Mount Desert Island community, the school system, the hospitals, the Jackson Lab, the MDI Bio Lab, importantly, Acadia National Park, and the, 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 the entire Gulf of Maine. So it's much, much larger than that. Second, I want you to think of this campus a little differently, not just as a set of buildings in a place, but more like a laboratory or a workshop. And the buildings, the grounds, the gardens, trees, soils, bridges, everything about this place has been sculpted by students, staff, and faculty over the past 50 years. Then finally, and, and most important, recognize first that we're shooting this in the middle of mud season, mid-April. Uh, but mid-April, as you know, is also the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so there are no people here. And really as beautiful as this campus is, and it is an exquisite, gorgeous place, without people, it's just, it's missing. You know, this college and this campus it's about first and foremost people, and there are very few of them here. So I'm gonna try and you know, intersperse the video with stills that give you a sense of, of what it's like with people here, but um, people are the core of this place. All right, so that's my little introduction at this, which we call the Whale Skull. That's a, kind of the geographic starting point for our tour. Let's head out. Immediately across from the Whale Skull is the Door Museum, our, the COA's Natural History Museum. This was the original Acadia National Park headquarters building that was commissioned by George Door in 1914. We offered to move the building rather than, rather than raise the building. And so we, um, we did in fact Asked the board of the YMCA if we, if we could move it intact, would they give it to us? And they did, so we moved it. Wow. Uh, 1998, I believe, was the year. 98, it came here. Yes. Very nice. While we're at the Natural History Museum, let's just swing on over and check out Cottage House. All right, so I'm gonna take you into two different um, dormitories, an older and a newer. And this is Cottage House. My best friend when I was a COA student lived in Cottage House, Bill Skanga. Here's Cottage House, a nice little common area, nice kitchen, beautiful. Six people live in, in Cottage. I'll just show you room number one, to give you an idea of what it looks like. Not a bad room, bunks, place to live. I'm gonna walk across the athletic yard. There's the standing elk by Wendy Klemperer. Love this field. Great spot for frisbee, ultimate frisbee, soccer. This is where we have our tug of war day before graduation. Really nice place on campus. We see the hatchery office there, that tiny green building. That's the office that houses students who are participating in the hatchery program, which is our sustainable business and entrepreneurship program. 
Okay, so we're heading south now through the Red Pines and through the archway at Blair Tyson, which is one of our student housing spots. Here we're coming through the courtyard of Blair Tyson. And BT, that's what we call Blair Tyson. Oh, first of all, some flowers, that's good. There are seven units, eight students per unit, and they're based around a shared kitchen and a common space, and it's a really nice little, little spot to live. All right, so we're gonna head past the bike shed. I'm gonna drop down, check out the little faculty village of faculty offices We're built in the 1990s by students. Okay, we're just gonna pass Peach House here, another student residence for eight students, named after Ann Peach, who was the second employee of COA. She was the business office manager, secretary, just about everything. Now we're just gonna take a quick walk through the woods. We are at the southern end of our campus, heading toward the water. And this building is called Witchcliffe. There are teaching spaces in here and faculty offices. Here's our bike repair shed and outing program shed. Not too much to look at, but a really important part of the curriculum here. Most students begin their COA experience with the OOPS, the Outdoor Orientation Program, where they set off to explore all kinds of different parts of Maine by ocean, river, or hiking trail. Now we're coming up to the Davis International Center here. Of the seagulls. COA is interesting. We have 350 students. A quarter of them are international students and they come from 60 different countries. The Davis Center is named after this remarkable woman, Catherine Wasserman Davis, who crossed the Caucasus in the 1940s by horseback, lived to 106, was a champion for, for peace all over the world. She was a remarkable woman and a great friend of College of the Atlantic. Davis Porch is not a bad place to have a class and it is an amazing spot to come to know Frenchman Bay. There's Bar Island, right in front of the College of the Atlantic. During low tide, a little land bridge opens up. And we start the academic year every year swimming from that island back to the COA campus in an event called the Bar Island Swim. There's where we came from, the Davis International Center. We are going to head this way, north, into an area called the Davis Village that is the primary residential area in the college. It's made up of six smaller eight-person residences and then Sea Fox, which is right here. Sea Fox is the largest campus dorm. About 30 people live there. And then finally, it's made up of the Deering Common, which is our student center right there. Okay, we're gonna check out one of the Davis village houses called Eno, named after Alice Eno, a remarkable woman. Really nice kitchen. We go upstairs, nice single room. Simple, clean, nice, super efficient. The 
nice view of the woods. Each of these units has a composting toilet, which really helps us reduce our water footprint. About 11,500 gallons a year, actually. This building behind me used to be called Riles, named after Mrs. Riles, and where that staircase is right there, uh, there used to be this long corridor sticking off of it, and that's where I lived my, my freshman year, in case you're interested. Deering Commons, we have a nice little cafe in here. Beautiful sitting area. And then, like always, a tremendous porch with a view. Here we are on the Deering porch. Not a bad spot to have a class or just to relax. Leaving the Deering Commons now, heading north, leaving the kind of residential part of campus behind us. It's pretty nice having a little brook feed right into the ocean on our campus. Come across the bridge, up the path, there you can see the turrets building. But before we head up to turrets, I want to take a quick loop through what's known as the Sunken Garden. Sunken Garden is a little bit of a, an old ruin here on campus that was partially refabricated as a part of a senior project. Now Rhubarb Garden, part of that refab involved the reconstruction of this amazing arch. Look at the girth of that remarkable copper beach. There's the turrets building. It was built in 1895 and it was, a, it was designed by architect Bruce Price. It was gifted to the college in 1970 before we had any students here. And then over the course of the past 50 years, we've, we've restored it. Today, Turrets is uh, where my office is and a lot of the other administrative offices, but it also includes great teaching spaces and upstairs on the third floor is our academic services and also Allied Whale, COA's research arm that's focused on marine mammals in the Gulf of Maine and all over the world. Here we are in the Great Hall of Turrets, named after one of our founding trustees, Les Brewer, and beautiful classroom named Gower Classroom, named after the other co-founding trustee, Father Jim Gower. We're gonna go upstairs to the second floor. We come to the Strauss seminar room. Now we love to do work outside of the classroom. When we're in the classroom, it's really nice to be grounded and in a place like this. And if you're fortunate enough to have a smaller class still of who knows, maybe six or eight students. It's a nice day. Oh, come on out to the porch, the Strauss porch overlooking Bar Island. One of my most favorite spots on campus is the turrets porch. Again, we really enjoy porches here at the College of the Atlantic, especially when that is your view out to Bar Island. Here's the seaside garden out in front of turrets. Remember when I described this campus as a workshop or a laboratory? Well, this is one of the great experiments. It was a senior project 
by Eamon Hutton. Uh, he completely restored this garden and it is remarkable even in April. Leaving the garden behind, we will walk down this path to our waterfront. I mentioned before that the ocean is a really big part of who we are. Well, we are the College of the Atlantic, after all. Pretty nice having our own beach. This is the College of the Atlantic waterfront and our pier. It's the gateway to the Gulf of Maine, to our two island research stations at Great Duck Island and Mount Desert Rock. And it's where our research vessel, Osprey, and all of our other watercraft get docked. Some of our sea kayaks, we do sea kayaking really well. That's where we're heading next. That's Kelber Hall, named after our founding president, Ed Kelber. Kelber Hall has our library, our dining facility, admissions office, computer labs, great teaching spaces. Up until 1983, there was a building on this property called Guy's Cliff that was the kind of center of the COA campus. And that was burned to the ground in July of 1983. It was a really traumatic time for the College of the Atlantic, not surprisingly. Let's head up these stairs. Nice stone work. And we're gonna come up to a spot of campus known as the Red Bricks, for obvious reason. Ezra Hallett, alumnus and admissions counselor. How are you, Ezra? Good, how are you doing, Darren? Good. Come in and get Connor, too. Okay, here's Lise. Come on in. All right, in the tab. Make it bond me. This is the hardest part of this video tour is because tab is usually like thriving and throbbing with humanity. And we're at a much reduced scale now, but you know, here's our kitchen. Hey, Connor, how are you, man? <laughs> we take food very seriously here at COA. Let's head into the Thorndike Library. Thank you, Miller. Go right ahead. Coming into the main office, there's Hannah St Stevens. Hey, Hannah. <laughs> Hannah is the archivist, hanging tough. And we're gonna go into the main reading room. And as you know by now, we do balconies really well. 
Thorndike Library, balcony, turrets, the bar opened up to Bar Island. Let's take a walk into the Gates Auditorium. This is the Gates Auditorium. Millard, you gonna go unlock it? Oh, Willie. Willie. All right. We are a very performative bunch here at the College of the Atlantic. And this is the Gates Auditorium where we do a lot of performing and where we hold our big meetings, including the all college meeting, which is the kind of center of the COA governance process. Across the red bricks and into the arts and sciences building. First floor, I'm check out the zoology lab. What's going on in there? Hey guys. I'm here out there. What are we doing in here? We're doing a, a necropsy. A necropsy of some chicken. Oh yeah. Ooh. It is a beautiful place to be in the greenhouse. Peek into our chem lab. Painting studio up in the Art and Sciences building. We go across to the other painting studio and our printmaking studio, which Millard and I agree has the best light on campus, maybe. Excellent. Really interesting thing about that Art and Sciences building is that most of the functionality is going to live up here in our new Center for Human Ecology. And when hopefully you arrive as students, one of the most exciting places that you'll be learning here on campus is in the Center for Human Ecology. We'll be done in January of 2021. And on the North Lawn, it's home to the best rope swing. There's the North Lawn and looking back south toward Bar Harbor. This is where we celebrate graduation. Here in the northernmost part of campus is the community garden where student staff, faculty, and members of the MDI community can have a 10 by 10 plot. Our northern boundary has the Pottery Studio, Buildings and Grounds Office, and Studio 5 and 6. So there's looking back at the Community Garden and the Center for Human Ecology. Immediately across the street is a trailhead that leads right into Acadia National Park. So that's my overview of the College of the Atlantic campus. I hope it was helpful. And it's been at least a 50 year laboratory of human ecology. I hope the next time I see you will be here on campus.